Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to be taking you through the solution to question 12 from this Junior Cert higher level paper and this question is based on trigonometry. So let's get right into it. So we are told that the diagram below shows a circle K. A, B and C are on the circle. We're told that A, B is the diameter of the circle. Okay and that's important to note. And we're told that AC is 8 centimeters. The area of the circle is 25 pi centimeters squared. We're asked to work out the size of the smallest angle in the triangle ABC. So by I, you can see that this angle here is going to be the smallest. Okay, so I'm just going to call that A and that is what we are looking for. So we are told that the area of the circle is 25 pi centimeters squared. I'm going to use this to find out the length of the radius. Okay, we know that this has to be a right angle because we're told that AB is the diameter and any triangle in a semicircle, okay, so when one side of it is the diameter, has to be a right angle triangle. And this is something that you should remember, okay? So this is a right angle. So if I work out the length AB, and I have this here, I can use my trigonometric functions to work out A. So first of all, I need to find the length of AB. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, and you can find this in the log tables if you don't know it off by heart. And that is equal to 25 pi centimeters cubed. So let's work out what the radius is. So I can divide both sides by pi and get rid of the pi. So now I have r squared is equal to 25. So let's find the square root of both sides. The square root of r squared is just r. And the square root of 25 is 5. So r is equal to 5. The radius is 5. So the diameter must be 10. So this length here is 10 centimeters. So now we have our triangle. So I'm just going to bring the triangle down here. I'm going to draw it down here. So we can use our trigonometric functions to find an angle in right angle triangle. So just to remind you of those, it is sine cos tan. So sine of A or the cos of A or the tan of A, and A is the measure of an angle, is equal to, and how I remember it is O hell another hour of algebra, you might have another rhyme or whatever to remember those yourself. So I know that the sine of A is the opposite length over the hypotenuse, the cos of A is the adjacent length over the hypotenuse, and the tan of A is the opposite length over the adjacent. So let's see what we have. We have 10, 10 is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite because it's opposite the angle we're looking for, and this here is the adjacent. So we have the hypotenuse and the adjacent, so we're going to use the cos of A. So the cos of A is equal to the adjacent, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So now we need to find the cos inverse. So A is equal to the cos inverse, because we're moving it over to the other side, of 8 divided by 10. And this is going to give us the answer that we're looking for. So let's go on to our calculators. To find the cos inverse, you're going to press shift and then press cos. You can see you have cos to the power of minus 1. Put in 8 over 10. And you're going to get an answer of 36.869 degrees. So I'm going to round that to two decimal places. So it's going to be 36.87 degrees. Okay, and this is our final answer. Now, just one small thing. If you find you're putting this into your calculator and you're not getting this answer, your calculator might be in radian mode. It needs to be in degree mode. So you can see up the top of my calculator, you can see that small D there. If that is an OR on your calculator, you're going to press shift and then the mode setup button. You can see setup is in yellow there and then press three for degree. OK, and then you should get the right answer. So for this question, you're going to get a total of 10 marks. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.